on September 23, 2020, I introduced you to this young man by the name of Cedron Walters, and he is a data scientist and specialist in resume writing. Now, I remember asking you, my listeners, if you have a resume. I also remember asking if you know how to write a resume. And when was the last time you updated your resume? Now, if you remember, nod your head. Say yes. Put up your 10 finger and your 10 toes. Okay. Yes. Do you remember this? I remember that. Asking that. Well, many people still have no idea as to where to start when it comes to resume writing. They either add too much unnecessary information or they simply don't add enough of the relevant information. Now, if you fall in any of these categories, I once again have you covered. Cedron is here to the rescue. Hi, Cedron. Good afternoon. Welcome to Miss Kitty Live. How are you doing? Hi, Miss Pitty. Thank you for having me again. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing magnificent. Thank you so much for asking. It's great to have you yet again on my show. It's that time of the year again when, you know, I tell BPO and I'm quite sure other entities are hiring persons and they need to write their resumes. I have got a lot of questions about resume writing, what to put on it, what not to put on it. And so I, I you know, directed them to my show from last year, which was aired on September 23, 2020. But I say, you know what? Let me just get back Cedron just to um, refresh our memories about resume writing and the do's and don'ts of writing your resume. So I want you to please Cedron to walk us through the first steps of designing the perfect resume. All right. So let's start with uh, knowing the difference. First knowing the difference between a resume and a CV, which is a curriculum writing. Yes. Right. So a resume is more of a tailored Summary, um, tell a summary of your qualifications for the job. So you yes. have to connect it to the specific job that you're going to apply for. Uh, yeah, TV, you know, at Curriculum Vitae, it's more of a display of your life's work. So all your awards, if you've done research, um, your, all your education, everywhere you've worked, so on. So it's basically a, telling your entire biography or professional biography. Okay. But the resume, you know, it's a bit more... It's oh, a summary. a summary. Yeah. Um, yes, a summary, kind of targeted to the job you're going to apply for. All right, hold right. that thought. So there. Hold that thought. There. That going, hold on, Cedron. Yeah. Hold that thought for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, people on Instagram and on Facebook, you need to turn your phones up. All right. Remember, lightning did strike we over here, and so the the volume. You understand? Yeah. So we turn it up as much as possible, se possible. Okay. So turn your phones up. <laughs> So you can listen or go on your radio, right? You know, <laughs> right? Or YouTube and watch it there if the volume is a problem. All right, we're having some difficulties. We're working feverishly to correct it, but you know, when Mother Nature strike, you know, we can't strike back, right? So we just have to work with it. So you can uh, <clears throat> turn your volume up on your phone, or you could go to Nationwide ninety FM ninety point three ninety point five. 90.7 or 90.9. Very well. Thank you so much. Carry on, Cedron. Right. So just to, just to wrap up that part, so resume, tailor it, let it be somewhat more summary and targeted to the job you're applying for. So, for example, if you're um, applying for a, let's say a bank teller job, you're not going to put a job on it that has nothing to do with that job mm -hmm. or is not relevant to it at all. Yes. Right? Not saying that you may not learn things from other jobs, but um, if it doesn't have anything at all to do with the job, then it's best you just keep that information. So you may work 10 places, but you perhaps only need to mention about four that is tailored towards the job. Okay. Right? Okay. So let's start with some don'ts. Yes. Let's start with some don'ts. So let's start with the background, your background information. Right? So we're trying to avoid now, do not put anything that may cause some level of discrimination against you. Okay. Uh, for example, your marital status. Oh. Some person, like, yes. Yes, so I some remember you said that. Some look at it and say, oh, they're married. Yes, they're married or they're single or they perhaps prefer someone who's single. Maybe they'll mention that in the interview, but don't give them that ammunition uh, from the onset. The AMC use your resume to get through the door into the interview, right? So they can make determine what they want at that point. Because you make them to the interview and they realize that, wow, this person, we can make compromise and we can use this person um, to, as an asset to the company, right? even though they may have some biases. Yes. So you, you should need, as a person, you need to understand that there is a human at the end of 
um, the who is reading the resume. So they may have their own biases. So you're trying to move, remove anything that may discriminate. So we're talking about marital status. We're talking about uh, be careful how you put religious affiliation there. Hey, especially in these right? times. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> be careful how you put religious hey. affiliation. Hey. Uh, you certain things wait until you go to the interview or perhaps until you get the job to mention yes. uh, if it's going to be something that if it's not going to be something that may affect the job so they can make their decision at that point in time because so, they, so, so what they, are the they things that I everything for the resume. so what do I put on the job Cedron so alright I put my name obviously right so you put your name do I put my address I remember yes. that you said no address no, I said, well, you put your address, but don't put your exact address. Okay. Because we don't know who is handling your resume. That's kind of a security issue. You don't want to know. Some person put the exact apartment number, exact street, Aye. and so on. You put your, yeah, so you have to be very careful. You don't know who is handling your resume or who it may go to. Yes. Uh, you don't know the level of security on that information. So, uh, yeah, in these times, you really want, you, you don't need to give us too much information. Um, normally, I recommend you just put the perhaps just the parish. Okay. Um, so well, Saint Mary. Country, on. Okay, so Saint Mary Jamaica. Yes, Saint Mary Jamaica. Okay, very yeah, well. At the end of the day, they just need to know. At this point in time, they just need to know that you can get to work. All right, very right? well. They Do don't need to. To know yeah, my exact street and lane. Wrong address. <laughs> right, exactly. We definitely don't want that at all. Yeah. Do you put your age on it? Uh, no, definitely not. Don't put your age on it. Um, as I said, that may be discriminatory. You know, that, wait until the interview for them to see that, oh, this person is young or person is um, a bit older than I expected or so on. Okay. Right? okay. Uh, you don't want, as I said, the resume is just to get you through the door. Don't give them too much information um, in, in certain regards because it may work against you. May work against right. you. What so, about what about the length yeah. of the resume? So we have the name, your address, and just be general mm -hmm. about it. Don't be very specific, mm -hmm. as you know this can be a security mm -hmm. concern mm -hmm. because you don't know in whose yeah. hands your resume will drop, which is very great. Don't put your age on it. Don't put your yeah. marital status because these are things that could you know cause a potential interviewer to discriminate, not knowing you know mm -hmm. what really is the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. All right. So now. And in terms of your, I mentioned also religious affiliation. Yes. Um, sometimes this may work in your favor because there are some jobs which re may require, let's say, your a certain university or one university may prefer mm -hmm. um, someone, uh, let's say a Christian school may prefer yes. someone who is Christian. Right. Or right. if you look at a Christian hospital. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, it may work in your favor. Um, so, or it, if you look at the job description, sometimes they say they prefer someone who is X, 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 Y, Z. So you can mention that um, if it works in your thing. But in general, if it if it has nothing to do with the job, if the religion has nothing to do with the job, or it's not going to affect it anyway, um, okay. you don't need to mention it. All also, right. in terms of discrimination, picture. Picture. Sometimes persons put pictures on it. Oh, their picture. Their picture so don't put a right? picture on it? Yeah, unless it, there are some jobs that may require a picture. For example, if you're modeling or acting, because... All of that is based on image. So there are jobs that require a certain image. Yes. Um, so that's fine if I put a picture there on your resume for those type of jobs. But if an image, if you're not going to work in anything like modeling or acting or stuff like that, your image may not have any bearing on it. So it don't put that in. Okay, very right. well, very well. All right. Yeah. So, and by the way, guys, let me just put this disclaimer, okay? Uh, what Cedron is saying isn't gospel and it may not be uh, something that you want to follow. We're just giving you some guidance. So if you have another way that you want to do your resume, go right ahead and do it. If you have another formula, go right ahead and use it, okay? I, we're just giving a general overview of what obtains now in the marketplace. So if you use a resume guru, you don't need to hear this. You understand? Yeah, just go guru out yourself and resume out your body. You understand? Yeah, but we are talking about this right as so right now because some of we don't know and we need the guidance from people who are um in the field and Cedron has that kind of qualification. Okay, very well. Go on, Cedron. So don't put a picture if it's not like for modeling or a job that requires a headshot or something like that. Yes. All right, very yes. well. Uh, so we've we, so we've addressed the discriminatory stuff. Yes. Right? Um let's talk about hobbies. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hobbies have nothing to do with the job. That's a waste of space, right? So they, don't tell me you like reading and 
walking on the beach and, and watching TV. Like that. They <laughs> might not like that because I yeah. said this is a Netflix head. <laughs> she ain't gonna watch Squid Games the whole time and surfing the internet. She not gonna do no work in here. Do a wash. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I like to sleep. Okay, wow, she's lazy. Now, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. So don't put your hobbies. Yes. Um, okay. Also, be careful about the email address you're using, <laughs> right? So, for example, <laughs> some persons, for example, you have <laughs> Miss Kitty. You don't want hot, sexy, ferocious Miss Kitty at <laughs> Gmail. No. Come on, so on. Oh, don't put Miss Kitty part <laughs> ways right now. Yeah, that's that. Don't go near. <laughs> <laughs> You want something that is easily, um, easy to remember at many times, just sometimes just pick your name. So, True. Um, yeah, so just Kadeem Hilton at Gmail is fine. That's or right. Of, of that sort. So, so I, it's and, and easier and, for the person to just. And I, sorry, Sedron, I like that you said that because, you know, uh, sometimes persons don't understand how to make the transition from regular, you know, uh, their ordinary life into mm -hmm. the professional world. And there are just some email addresses mm -hmm. that, you know, conjure the wrong impression and give off the wrong vibe. And you want to make sure that you mm -hmm. are at all times being professional. So just use like your 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 first set of, your, you know, your initials and your or your first initial and your last name at gmail.com. That's easy, mm -hmm. right? But titled, right? Told, yeah. of a come back at gmail.com that's not gonna work <laughs> yes, not yes. Gonna, <laughs> yes yes stick it to stay, right. stick it to so, glimity glamity at gmail yeah it's that's yeah. not gonna work <laughs> i don't <laughs> yes it does it's sometimes just make it as easy as possible to remember yeah. um so it's sometimes just make it just stick to your actual name absolutely right? um also so in terms of a lot of places i see put personal objective uh that, that's also kind of a waste of space. So my personal objective is to be the greatest data scientist in the world. Uh, no. Um, or my personal objective is to, to serve this company to the best of my ability. That you're coming there to work, I'm sure you're going there to be the best. That's a waste of space. But what you can do to replace that is perhaps like a personal um, summary or a professional summary. Mm -hmm. So you tell them you are... You know, you're a TV presenter with a number of years of experience in this and this area, and this is your interest and so on. So they can have a, somewhat of like a one, two, just one or two sentences to just summarize what um, your profession, your your perhaps how many years of experience you have, the areas of experience you have, and perhaps your interest as well. Okay. So they can get a snapshot of what you want, mm -hmm. rather than um, an objective that, that has no weight on it at all. So mm -hmm. it's easy to replace it. Mm -hmm. And an objective right. so that may not necessarily align uh, with what the company wants or may just be too vague. Yes. Um, and if you want to do, you can probably just put that in the cover letter and so on, but not on the resume. The resume is just trying to keep it context and focus on um, getting the information that you need them to get, that you're qualified for this job. All right, we're talking to Cedra right, Walters so this afternoon. He is a data scientist and specialist in resume writing. He's walking us through the do's and don'ts of resume writing. Uh, as you know, I tell BPO they're hiring right now. And many of you have asked me, Miss Kitty, what do I put on my resume? What do I put on my cover letter? Do I need a cover letter? And I said, you know what? Let me call uh, Cedron, who has the experience, who has the expertise in this particular area, and see if he can, again, share with us, uh, you know, the do's and don'ts of resume writing. We're going to take a break and come right back and then we're going to find out from Cedron how should our resumes look should we go with the colorful should we go conservative how long should our resumes be and the, this this thing about cover letter what exactly is a cover letter is it necessary do you need it so make sure you keep it locked right here to Miss Kitty Live sizzling every day and refreshing your resume Miss Kitty Live. Nation 190 FM, DJ Calico on your radio, Team Revolution, revolutionizing how you listen to and love afternoon radio. We're talking to Cedron Walters this afternoon, data scientist and specialist in resume writing. I had him on my show back in 2020, uh, September 23 to be exact. But now that, you know, a lot of people are looking for jobs, a lot of people have been displaced, unemployed, uh, you know, made been made redundant. And some people just really uh, want an extra job. Uh, some people want another source 
source or stream of income. Some people want to also change uh, their profession, change their career. You know, they just want to broaden your thing and, you know, get some other things. And so a lot of people have got their CSEC results, their CAPE results. And so they're also writing resumes. But some people really are at sea as to what to do and how to write their resume. So Cedron is here giving us some tips, some pointers as to what to do and what not to do. So Cedron, when we went to break, we were I was going to ask you the question about the colorful yes. uh, nature of our you know, uh, resume. Should we go outlandish with the colors or should we keep it conservative? All right. So many positions tend to be a bit. It depends on the position you're applying for. Mm -hmm. So for a conservative position, like perhaps if a doctor or if the work is going financial services, you know, desk jobs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something a bit more conservative, um, I would suggest more conservative design or conservative color. You know, don't go all red and bright and neon colors and so on. Um, you can still be creative, but keep it a bit simple and um, organized and to the point. Right. So I recommend like perhaps like black and white, nothing's wrong with black and white. Um, you can probably put a navy blue or a pastel color, stuff like that. Nothing too bright and heavy. Right, um, so keep it sober. Yeah, keep it sober. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, the, 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 the most important thing is the information and being able to easily decipher the information. Right. So, so you don't want you, you don't want so you, Yeah, so you yeah. don't want to so you don't want to distract your the interviewer with all the colours and the flashiness unless it's for example for an art job or something artistic and you may want to show yeah. your resume is a part of your exhibit or uh, you know or exhibition exactly. of what you can do, you know. Mm -hmm. But other than that, just keep it sober. Is there a particular font size yeah. or you know, we should use? Uh, so, you be careful of the font. It's best to use very subtle fonts, you know, Times New Roman, Calibri, stuff like that. Things that aren't very flashy or so, for example, like a script. Mm -hmm. So, use like calligraphy and so on. Unless you it's perhaps like uh, the, perhaps the header. Yeah. Um, you're writing in there. You can probably a bit more, a bit slightly a bit more fancy with that. But at the end of the day, it's supposed to be clear that this is your name. Very it's, well. It should be hard to decipher your name or stuff like that. Yes. Right? Um, you can you have a bit more flexibility if you're let's say you're a creative. Mm -hmm. So if you're like a graphic designer or a digital media individual or a PR person, it's a bit more flexible in terms of how you do it. Um, I've seen a resume before that somebody designed it like a newspaper or something like that. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the information should be there and should be. So even if you want to kind of show off your creativity, the information should still be very plain and to the point and it shouldn't be very distracting anything shouldn't be nothing that should on the resume should be distracting from the actual information very so well. you can do something to catch their eye and say when they're going through their 200 and 300 resume that they have to stop at yours yes. and say wow this is beautiful but when they stop at it it should be they should be able to just easily get the information from it very well in terms right? of length of the resume <laughs> how long should a resume be all right, so I don't normally like to dictate the length of the resume because it depends on your years of experience and your your um uh, what the amount of things you've done or yes. relevant to the job. Yes. Right. I don't say not to use everything, but I normally recommend about two to three pages. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so probably don't go over three, but it all depends on how you organize your resume. Ah. I always say the most important thing should be on the first page of the resume. Very so, well. So. Um, your first page should have your professional summary. It should have a, a list of your key skills, right? So from the onset, they know your skill set. Um, if your education is the strongest point, if you don't have much, let's say you don't have much experience, but your education is the strongest point, then you mention that first on the first page, mm -hmm. and then you probably go on to your, your experience. If your education is probably not the strongest point, but you're, you have a wealth of experience, then you go with the experience at first. At first. So your strongest, the strongest thing should be on the first page of your resume. So they, from that onset, they say, wow, this person is actually qualified for the job mm -hmm. um, in many ways. And then they can go on. And, so you, you organize it based on priority. So the first page based on your strongest point, then second page and you go along. Um, so I don't want to see, let's say, if it has nothing strong, strong to do with the job, let's say you're including your 
what I call leadership experience and volunteerism. So you are you're part of this club and you've done this like Rotaract or Lions Club and stuff like that. You can put that on your resume, yes. But if it's not the strongest thing, you don't want to put that on the first page because it has nothing strong to do with the job. It kind of shows that you're well-rounded as an yeah. individual, yes. But it's not the strongest thing to put first. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like so so, so like my basic you organize it. So my basic school and primary school <laughs> part this so no. Don't put that on the front page. Oh gosh no. Um at this point in time, if you're looking at job, do not I don't you shouldn't put anything below your high school. So say Jerome um, because I'm gonna Lara's oh. basic and judge in the primary I put that <laughs> I put that because my primary school and my basic school. Laura's basic school <laughs> and judge in the primary school and I was in olden house. I wanna put that. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sad to say what well, that has nothing to do with the job. Yeah. Your your A's, your A's and your hundreds in GS that has nothing to do with the job. Um at that point in time it's that's something just feels to matriculate the high school. So let's I usually say also with your degree, um yes. once you for if you get a degree, let's say you get a degree, don't list out all your subjects. Um if your strongest educational point, let's say it's high school and you have the subject, yes, you can list them out. Yeah. Um, but Why said high, John, based on your highest education. Why said John, <laughs> all women have 20,000 education. If we get 20 ones in a sexy, they put them on the table. You could have fight me. Fight off the ones. I'm never ne- put my 10 ones, sir. I'm never going to lie. Me, I'm going to be my, careful. <laughs> me, I'm going to put my 10 ones. You're taking your valuable space on your resume. You know, I'm going to say. You're taking your valuable space on your resume. Well, tough luck. Me, work for my 18 ones. Me, I put them. <laughs> but you're saying if you have a degree. Then, tell them in the interview. Yeah, tell yeah. them in the interview. So put your, your <laughs> latest educational achievement first if that's what mm, you have yes okay very well yes wow so if you're as i say if you're strongest is like high school i have subjects or cape or so on mm-hmm. you're allowed to list those or, or the strongest subject so even if you're going for an accounting job in your high school and your high school your high school is your strongest education they are your highest level of education then you'll probably even if you have 10 subjects you mentor that ensure that they already have Math, English, um, account, POA, POB, etc. So you have something, you show them that you have something related to the job, right? And sometimes job dictate that you need to have math and English. So you mention, say, mention, oh, I have eight subjects, including math and English. Yeah, somebody um, somebody in my life so just you, said, you know, uh, sometimes putting the 10 ones, though, can, you know, people will say you're overqualified. And that, as we were talking about being discriminated against, that in and of itself. So as you said, mm-hmm. for real, in a Cedron, don't put too much mm-hmm. because it can go against you. Let me take this time signal and then continue with Cedron right here. We're talking about resumes, do's, at resume, do's and don'ts. How to write your resume, mm-hmm. what you need to put on it, what you need, shouldn't put on it. And we're discussing all of that. So you can write your resume today. Very well, Cedron. So we need, and oh, by the way, guys, we shouldn't put our, the hospital that we're born on the resume. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Father God. Not a Father University a Hospital. Dog a jubilee. Not <laughs> 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 alive, Father oh, God. No, no you know, so we want to put the things there. So that's not supposed to be on it. Okay, guys? All right, good. So yes, Cedron, what you say now? So if you say if we have a degree, then put that you don't need to list out all of your subjects. However, if your high school, yeah. uh, if your education is, uh, your highest um, education is from your high school, then you may put that. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, but no primary school, no basic school. It has nothing, no. Okay, and not the hospital, <laughs> no what you're born? No, Okay. All right. No, Cedron, right. a lot of people are asking this question as to whether a cover mm-hmm. letter is necessary and what exactly mm-hmm. is the purpose of a cover letter? All right, so many jobs, uh, personally, I don't get the point of a cover letter, you're using fancy words, but many jobs, many jobs require a cover letter. So if they require a cover letter, then give them a cover letter. Um, the cover letter really kind of adds to your resume um, in, in the sense that you have an opportunity to tell them why you're applying for the job, um, why you're applying for the job, what you can um, add to the job, and what you think to gain from the job, right? So I usually tell persons that they're writing their cover letters, they start with uh, um, a summary of who you are. It's kind of similar to your professional summary of, you know, you are a TV producer with so so many years of experience, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you need to tell them why you're applying for the job. Um, also, what you can add to the job. Mm-hmm. Just a summary of the skills that you, you have, um, which would help the job. 
um, sometimes it helps to also research a company, you know, ah. look at their motto and their values yes. and so on. Yes. And their and their mission statement. That's yeah. a very good place to start. Yes. And how your personal values and um, principles align with their mission statement mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the company. Right? And then no, I like you tell that. Them I like that. Hold on, hold on, Cedra. Hold, hold on, Cedra. Let mm-hmm. me. I want that to marinate a little bit. You know, I like, I like, I like what mm-hmm. you just said because I think that a lot of times people overlook that you are going, you're looking a mm-hmm. job for from a company, you want to work at that company, and you don't do any research. You don't know anything about yes. them. You don't know what their colors are, and or if they have any competitors and what that competitor color is, or you know what I mean. And so you know, as say for mm-hmm. example, you're going for a job like at um Wisinko then, right? And you say, well, you know, mm-hmm. and it, the interviewer might just ask you, so what are some of the products that we sell that you like? And it, yes. you're dead in the show because you don't know nothing with them sell. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, okay. And you come in there and thought, well, are you going on there and say, well, I love Pepsi because you drink Pepsi is sexy. Oh my God, that's a competitor. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that kind of vibe? And so you may go mm-hmm. to, so, so when you're going for an interview, doing research on the company, as Cedron said, their mission statement, what they're about, their color, what they do, mm-hmm. what they have done. Uh, that is important information that you can interweave or weave into your, con- your interview when, you know, you're in front of that person. Yes. And also, um, personally understand that you are giving your service, you're giving your time, right? So... You're not only, they're not only interviewing that you, you are interviewing them. Mm-hmm. You're saying that, yes, I have, I want to work for this company for X, Y, Z reasons, right? You, I'm here, in, you're interviewing me, but I'm here for a reason as well, which is why I said, you need to also mention in your letter, what helps is that you mention what this company can do for you. So you, do, you have a purpose there. Yes. You're not just there to just work for them. You're there to get something out of it. Yes. Um, as, uh, and you can say, okay, this company will, will provide me with opportunities to advance my career X, Y, Z. So you tell them what they can do for you, what you can do for them. Um, and it helps. So it, it's kind of a mutual, kind of symbiotic kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. Like they're not... I'm not here for you to drain me. I'm here to get something from you as well. Right. right? So you're not going in this groveling. This is a partnership. Yeah. <laughs> this is a partnership, not slavery. Very right? well. Very well. So, right. But I, I know time is going, so let me get to the job description. Yes. Um, where I see a person falls down a bit. Sometimes persons just copy and paste their job description. So they have a job description from their job. Let's say you're a secretary. They just copy and paste everything, right? Um, that doesn't help you much because it really just tells what you do or what you did there, what your job was. Um, what helps with job descriptions is your impact. Yes. So achievement you, um, achievement. Look at the achievements you've done at um, accomplished at past jobs. How can you incorporate that in your job description? Because they want to see, hey, I increased this, I made that efficient. And you use keywords, I've led this, um, I spearheaded this, um, I conceptualized this. So it shows show that you have impact. You're not just there to just do what they tell you to do. Yeah. Right? Um, so I, I, I usually say, just do a a summary, like a probably one or two sentences, a summary of the duties, and then you list some achievements. And don't list uh, like a long list of achievements. You may do a hundred things, but perhaps look for the top three or four things that you have accomplished. Yes. So let's say that you don't have, you probably haven't accomplished much, or big fancy numbers or big targets, whatever, you didn't increase this by 90% or 80% or increase this by 6%. But when you take out the job description, so look at the job description, Look at what is specific to the job, right? Um, and you, you list those. So perhaps just limited to four, probably again, um, probably I, I usually say don't pass four bullet points. Yes. I use bullet points, yeah. not paragraphs. Bullet points are easier to, to you know, don't use paragraphs, it's long paragraphs for them to read. Use bullet points. So point one, two, three, four, um, in terms of your job duty. So if the job you may have have 10 different things, but you pull out the things that are applicable to this job. As I said, the rhythm is like Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you can and you can tell it in such words. Um listing your key as I said, at the first page you need to list your key skills. Um and there are many ways to list. As last time I mentioned, I was the first to use filing. 
sometimes there, there, there are, yes, there are more appropriate terms to do that. Archiving, mm-hmm. um, archiving and record the management. That's yeah. what you do, right? Because that's a science by itself. You right. may not see that something flashy. For many persons, it may not be something flashy, but it's something relevant. Archiving yes. and record management. Rather than just filing. All right, let me just right? stop you there, Cedron, um, because you know the time is yeah. evaporating. But for those persons, yeah. Cedron, who really uh, need more help, or, you know, and they just can't write it, boy, Cedron, I hear all that you're saying. I've written it down, but I just yeah. need somebody to write my resume for me. I just send you the information. Uh, how can they get yeah. your services? Like, do you write e- resumes? And like, you just you just send it to them. I just do it for me. I just send it back. Oh, it go. Yeah. So normally, um, I can person can email me uh, with their resumes and I um, review Fix it up, yeah. and give them tips on how, yes, how, how to, to, to do it. Um, I do um, design resumes myself sometimes, but I can recommend them to a number of other individuals um, that I know or other companies that I know um, that does, does the consulting. But um, of course, I'm open to always helping individuals. It's kind of my way of giving back. A person Aww. can just email me, sessionwalter.hotmail.com. Um, it's always good personally, it's always nice to hear a person's success stories. Yeah. Um, I can tell one success where a person was looking for a job for um, over a year, um, especially during the pandemic. Um, and I said, just send me a resume. I looked at it, helped them with it, and adjusted it. And they got a job in perhaps like oh, le- less than two months. Oh, wow. After over a year of searching. Right. So I love them to be your resume. So it's the first impression. Yeah. Right. So don't just. Put a black and white paper and do a little word document and just put a little one, two thing and just send it off. It, it, this is a reflection of you. So put some effort into it and it can tell, this may be the difference between you moving in your career or um, just the brink of just getting a job, um, especially in these times. Absolutely. So take time to be original. All right, my darling. Cedron, thank you so very much. Uh, Cedron Walters, and you can email him at C-E-D-R-O-N-W-A-L-T-E-R-S at hotmail.com. Cedron, thank you so much again for coming on. I sincerely appreciate it. The information is always relevant, always helpful, and I hope that persons would have benefited uh, from the information uh, they heard here today. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best. Continue to be safe. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so Thanks very much, it. Mr. Cedron Walters, data scientist and specialist in resume writing, and my very special guest on Miss Kitty Live. So far, I've received 307 emails, and I have received six letters right here at Broadcast House. Guys, on Friday, we're going to go through the emails, go through the resumes, and so I, uh, there's going to be a surprise, but you need to send in yours if it is that you're interested. ITEL is recruiting over a 1,000 persons for jobs in customer service and sales data science IT training and operations email me send your resumes to Miss Kitty JA at itelinternational.com or drop them off right here at Nationwide 90 FM 6 Bradley Avenue in Kingston Jamaica that's my time for today and it's my time to skedaddle up on out of here to make way for Nationwide at 5 the best news in the nation led by Cliff Hughes along with his hardworking team thanks to Alric and Tony who called earlier today and shared with us thanks to my technical operator bugs thank you so very much Thank you, DJ Calico. Thanks to my producer, Lady Tajna Williams. I love all of you for watching and I absolutely love you for listening. My very special guest, Cedron Walters today. Email him at cedronwalters at hotmail.com and get your resumes done today. Until when next you hear my voice, be blessed. Take care of yourselves and each other. And always remember, never forget, don't focus. Pana locus. Catch you guys tomorrow for another entertaining edition of Miss Kitty Live. Yay!